Well, our stormy day gave us plenty of wild video and photographs today, including this one from Gillette. This was actually a photo that was tweeted out by Gillette Stadium's Twitter handle. You can see that lightning bolt Ooh. right behind the stands at the stadium. It was only about an hour, it felt like, Eric, but things were really crazy for a while. I mean, Tom Brady is the storm, so it makes <laughs> sense. I got to say, the uh, social media crew at Gillette Stadium, they are on it. They always have great weather pictures and feel like they're definitely tracking the changing conditions around New England. After the storm, we talked about Marblehead being one of the hardest hit areas. Great sunset. A lot of spots saw a beautiful sunset this evening. Often the case after a stormy day. This one from Mark looking over the harbor, which is one of the prettiest little harbors in all of New England, I would say. Now, wrapped up a really hot month. Not just a really hot one, but the hottest month ever recorded in Boston. Dating back to 1872, this now stands at the number one position. Just consistent heat all month. It kind of reminded me of the opposite of February 2015. We never set a daily record high this month, but it's the hottest month. In 2015, we never had a record low in all of February, but it's the persistence that usually breaks monthly records. And especially at night, 17 nights failed to go below 70 in Boston. That's a record for any month. And just to look at, you know, when we talk about a warming climate, this is to me the ideal graphic to really explain it. You can still have cold weather, but when it comes to the really hot stuff outweighing the cold stuff, it's snow battle. 36 top 10 warmest months at Blue Hill Observatory this decade compared to one top 10 coldest month. And so it's really all about the ratio that's all usually favored toward warming conditions. Out there tonight, a cold front slowly pushing to the east and it's going to gradually deliver some drier air. We could use it. The dew points are still up around 70. You can see the drier stuff out around the Adirondacks in the St. Lawrence River Valley and some of that will push down during the day tomorrow. But it will still be a month Muggy morning, partly sunny skies, warm start in the 70s. We get back up into the 80s tomorrow, but we start to watch that drier air filter in, especially away from the coast. And there's a small, tiny chance for a pop-up shower in the afternoon near the coastline. But high temps still pretty warm, mid to upper 80s across most of the area for tomorrow. It's definitely going to be a nice beach day. Light onshore breeze developing. Muggier conditions will be found at the coastline. And here's a look at the details for humidity. In the afternoon, look at all that drier air away from the coast. Going to feel much more comfortable out. But if you're near the shoreline in southeastern Mass, it will stay humid. We get more of a push of that drier air as we head into Friday. And this is going to be a real comfortable day with dew points largely in the 50s. I think that's going to be an excellent day to be outdoors. Nice for opening ceremonies of the Pan Mass Challenge as well. And this weekend, we keep the dew points near 60. Nothing oppressive returning to the area once we get toward tomorrow afternoon. Weekend temps staying warm here, well into the 80s for both days. There's a slight storm risk each afternoon. And right now, it looks like the higher risk would be late in the day on Saturday. I think we're going to miss the majority of the activity, but there will be that chance for a pop-up storm in the heat of the late day. So for the Pan Mass Challenge, I think as we look toward the forecast here, most of the cyclists are already off the road by the time we get toward the evening. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for Saturday. And Sunday looks to be a dry day toward Cape Cod. Just have to stay hydrated with the warm weather. Temperatures generally in the low 80s across the Cape and the islands over the next several days. We are watching the tropics, by the way, as we head into August. Something to keep in mind. There is a system out there with a good chance of development. It's more than 10 days away from the east coast of the U.S. So we've got a long time to see how that develops. But there's your seven day. All warm weather. Weather here, first seven days of August, all coming in with temps well into the 80s, even some more 90s. David and Lisa, back to you. All right, thanks, Eric.